In this series of videos we'll be looking at how to set up your own hotspot right from the beginning. I'll be using the generic Chinese made hotspots like this one which are the cheapest hotspots available at the time of making this video. They're often called jumbo spots but there's no specific brand name for this product. They're based on the PiStar software. I'll be showing both how to set it up on Yaesu Fusion and on DMR modes, but that will come in later videos. So I'm assuming you'll be buying a hotspot which has been assembled already. It will most likely also come with a micro SD card with the software already on it. But if not, then you can follow my PiStar upgrade video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. That video shows the process of flashing the image to the SD card. The first thing you'll need to do is connect the hotspot to a power supply. It uses a micro USB cable and you can connect it to a computer via USB to power it or directly to a power supply. You can also power it with a USB power bank like this one if you want to take it out and about. Next you'll have to wait until it starts up and then wait a further two minutes until it turns on its own Wi-Fi access point. You can then connect to this access point on your computer to begin setting it up. The default password for this is Raspberry. Once you've connected, open a web browser and type in PiStar with the slash at the end. This will take you to the dashboard of the hotspot where you can see the recent activity on the talk group room or reflector you're connected to and change the configuration. So head over to the configuration page by clicking on configuration and you'll need to type in PiStar for the username and Raspberry again for the password and here it is. The first thing to do is set up your Wi-Fi. So scroll down and click on configure Wi-Fi and then you can click on scan for networks and hopefully it will find your network. And I'm actually going to be using my phone as a mobile hotspot because I'm out of range of my home Wi-Fi. You can do this too and it will let you take your hotspot out and about and use it wherever you have internet on your phone. So let's click on select on that network which is my phone and I'm going to type in the password which is displayed on the phone's screen and then I'm going to click save and connect. The next thing to do is to start configuring it. So we're going to be using the MMDVM host and this one is a simplex node. If you buy a duplex hotspot then you would select the duplex repeater option. The host name I'd recommend you just leave it the same. There's not really any reason to change that unless you specifically want to. If you do, then you'll have to type in whatever you type here into the address bar to get to this page. Next you put in your call sign and then you put in a radio frequency. You can put in the latitude and longitude as well if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. The next thing to do is select the radio modem type. If you're using the same hotspot that I'm using, then it's going to be this option here and then you can select the node type which makes it either private so it will only let you use it or public which lets any call sign use it. I believe in the UK you have to have it set to private by law but in other countries you can set it to public. The next thing is to choose the system time zone and I am in London so I'm going to leave it on that one and the dashboard language which I'm also going to leave on English UK. So now we've set up this section we have to click apply changes and wait for it to apply again. Okay so now we've got all this but it's forgotten which modem we're using so we have to go and select that again and it's this one here and I'm gonna to have to click on apply changes again and wait for it to apply them. Okay, so it's finished applying the changes and we're now ready to select a mode to use. Now you can also select the display type and on my one it has an OLED display 
and once you apply the changes again you should start seeing something on the display. At this point the tutorial splits into two parts. I'll be doing separate videos showing how to set up DMR and Yesu System Fusion. Make sure you're subscribed so that you see the second and later parts of this tutorial. If you're watching this a while after I've uploaded it, then look in the series playlist which is linked to in the description. That's where you'll find the other parts of the tutorial. Don't forget to give the video a like if you found it useful and see you in the next one.